Attorney General Garland, Elon Musk was a Democrat who admittedly supported Biden, but then he became a critic of the administration and exposed the censorship regime. Now, per public reports, the DOJ has opened not one but two investigations of Elon Musk. Mark Zuckerberg, on the other hand, spent $400 million in 2020 tilting the elections secretly for Democrats. No investigations whatsoever. To the American public, these look like mafia tactics. You pays your money, we look the other way. You get in our way, we punish you. The American public sees what these tactics are. Now I want to direct your uh, attention to a video here that we're going to play. Uh, obviously, that's a significant matter. It is an ongoing criminal investigation, and so I'm not going to comment on an ongoing criminal investigation. Were, were those pipe bombs operable? Again, the, again. The ATF is the expert. Again, it's an ongoing and criminal investigation, and under longstanding policy, I cannot comment. And we, As you know, this is a very active, ongoing investigation, and there are some restrictions on that, but we yes, will Yes, we can handle classified online. information, it's, and we fund your department, and so you need to provide that. that. It's not, respectfully, it's not an issue of classification. It's an issue of commenting on ongoing criminal investigations, which is something that by longstanding department policy, we are restricted in doing. And in fact, the last administration actually strengthened those policies, partly That's because- That's not our policy though, and we fund you. So let's move on. I could, Do you know how- So I'm not gonna violate this norm of, uh, of, of uh, the rule of law. I'm not gonna comment on an investigation that's ongoing. Peter, Nav Peter Navarro was indicted for contempt of Congress. Aren't you, in fact, in contempt of Congress when you give us this answer? This is an answer that's appropriate at a press conference. It's not an answer that's appropriate when we are asking questions. We are the committee that is responsible for your creation, for your existence of your department. You cannot continue to give us these answers. Aren't you, in fact, in contempt of Congress when you refuse to answer? Congressman, I have the greatest respect for Congress. I also have the greatest respect for the Constitution and laws of the United States. Um, the protection of pending uh, investigations and ongoing investigations, as I briefly discussed in another uh, dialogue a few moments ago, goes back to the separation of powers, which gives to the executive branch the sole authority to conduct prosecutions. Um, it's a requirement of due process and uh, respect for those who are under investigation, the protection of their civil rights. So well, with all, with, all due, with, with all due respect, respect Congress. with all due respect to that, uh, Iran-Contra was an ongoing investigation, and that didn't stop Congress from getting the answers. And you're getting in the way of our constitutional duty. You're signing the Constitution. I'm going to cite it. It's our constitutional duty to do oversight. Now, in that video... That was your answer to a question to me two years ago, when I said how many agents or assets of the government were present on January 5th and January 6th and agitating in the crowd to go into the Capitol and how many went into the Capitol? Can you answer that now? I don't know the answer to that question. Oh, last time, you don't know how many there were or there were none? I don't know the answer to either of those questions. If there were any, I don't know how many. You've I don't know whether there are any. I think you may have just perjured yourself that you don't know that there were any. You want to say that again, that you don't know that there I were have any? no personal knowledge of this matter. I think what I said the you've, last time. You've had two just, years to man, find man. out. And man. today, by the way, that was in reference to Ray Epps. And yesterday you indicted him. <laughs> Isn't that a wonderful coincidence? On a misdemeanor. Meanwhile, you're sending grandmas to prison. You're putting people away for 20 years for merely filming. Some people weren't even there yet. You've got the guy on video who's saying, go into the Capitol. He's directing people to the Capitol before the speech ends. He's at the site of the first breach. You've got all the goods on him, 10 videos, and it's an, and it's an indictment for a misdemeanor? The American public isn't buying it. I yield the balance of my time to Chairman Jordan. Yeah, I answer the question? I'm gonna ask you one now. Uh, yeah, let's, we'll let the gentleman. Yeah. Um, that, I, I, go ahead, but... The, uh, in discovery, in the cases um, that were filed with respect to January uh, 6, um, the Justice Department prosecutors provided whatever information they had about uh, the question that you're asking. Uh, with respect to Mr. Epps, the FBI has said that he was not an employee or 
informant of, of the uh, FBI. Uh, Mr. Um, Epps has been charged, um, and there's a proceeding, I believe, going on today on that subject. The charge is a joke. I yield to the chairman. <laughs> The, the time the gentleman has expired, the chair recognizes the, uh, the gentleman from California. Mr. Attorney General, my colleague just said that you should be held in contempt of Congress, and that is quite rich, because the guy who's leaving the hearing room right now, Mr. Jordan, is about 500 days into evading his subpoena. About 500 days. So if we're going to talk about contempt of Congress, let's get real. I mean, are, are you serious that Jim Jordan, a witness to one of the greatest crimes ever committed in America, a crime where more prosecutions have occurred than any crime committed in America, refuses to help his country, and we're going to get lectured about subpoena compliance and contempt of Congress? Jim Jordan won't even honor a lawful subpoena? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? There's no credibility on that side. Mr. Attorney General, you are serious. They are not. You are decent, they are not. You are fair, they are not. So I welcome you to the law firm of Insurrection LLP, where they work every single day on behalf of one client, Donald Trump. And they do that at the expense of millions of Americans who need the government to stay open, who want their kids safe in their schools, and would like to see Ukraine stay in the fight so that we don't help Russia. That's the expense that this nonsense, this clown show, I'd call it a clown show, except they actually have real responsibilities that affect real Americans. It's the difference between one side that believes in governing and one side that believes in ruling. You've tried to comply with this committee. In fact, last week, one of your special agents came here for an interview, brought his lawyer, and was told that he couldn't have his lawyer present. Mr. Jordan, who tells all of us he knows so much about the Constitution, wouldn't afford one of your employees one of the basic constitutional rights to have a lawyer present. In fact, they threatened to call the Capitol Police and arrest a lawyer that was brought. Are you familiar with that standoff that occurred last week, Mr. Attorney General? Uh, generally, yes. Well, your office also sent a letter detailing it that you were willing to comply, but you'd like him to have a lawyer, and I'd like to submit that to the record with unanimous consent. Without objection. Who appointed Mr. Weiss? Well, Mr. Trump was the last person who appointed Mr. Weiss to the position of U.S. Attorney. I appointed him to the position of Special Counsel last month. Who initially appointed John Durham? Uh, Mr. Durham was, I believe, also appointed by President Trump. Um, and uh, Mr. Barr appointed him as Special Counsel. And again, these guys are so upset that Donald Trump's appointed prosecutors aren't doing enough of the corruption that Donald Trump wants them to do. So either they are just following the law or they're not as corrupt and they're not willing to go as far as they think that Donald Trump deserves. That's what they're asking to happen here. Also, doesn't it seem that they want it both ways when it comes to the special counsel? A lot of questions suggested that the special counsel should be independent but when they didn't like the direction of the special counsel, you were asked why you didn't interfere more or involve yourself more or investigate more. Did, did you get that sense that you're kind of stuck here? When, when I make an appointment, somebody be special counsel or prosecutor, uh, um, the appointment is without respect to what the outcomes of the case uh, will be. Your office has made a number of reforms to 702, targeting uh, foreign nationals, uh, but those reforms have not been put into law. 702 is also one of the best weapons we have to go after fentanyl. Can you tell us uh, if you would support putting some of those reforms into law so we don't have to live administration to administration to see if they're going to be followed? Uh, I would. Uh, Section 702 uh, provides us uh, with the greatest amount, at least uh, the Justice Department, every morning, uh, uh, the greatest amount of intelligence that we receive about uh, dangerous threats to the United States. From foreign nationals? From foreign nationals. I am um, uh, uh, quite aware and sensitive to civil liberties concerns uh, uh, with respect to the queries. Um, and for that reason, I um, uh, put into place and extend, I extended some of those that Mr. Barr had begun at the end of his term. 
and I put further ones in place. Those have led to a dramatic uh, reduction in the number of queries um, and a dramatic reduction uh, in the number of uh, non-compliant uh, queries. I believe those are appropriate reforms, um, and I would be in favor of codifying them, yes. Thank you, Mr. Attorney General, and thank you for coming and doing something that the chairman is unwilling to do, testify to Congress. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Wisconsin.